Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 233 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to see you. There were 232 of these before this. 232 before? Yeah. Before. And uh, next week yeah. we'll be Eric's been working. Yeah. Eric's been working on his math. So what's coming up next week? I've been working, working on all kinds of things. I mean, next week we can say there's been 233 of them. Ah, oh, yes. 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 So, yeah. so that didn't get invited back next week. <laughs> Just to, just to kick things off tonight, it is 2:33, and and it's March 6th when this is going live. But somebody said to me on Twitter, "You need to you need to be uh, pressing your coffee." So I actually brought you. There we go. Some wow, nice, some nice pressed coffee. So get things started off right. Now, if you could pour a Guinness. Oh, coffee looks good. Yeah, there you go. Good. All right, it does. There we are. We're gonna get this show started right, people. There you are. One for you. <laughs> hey, Dave. I did not really have to take my socks and shoes off for counting. What have you been up to? Keeping you busy? What have I been up to? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, sure. I, 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 I think I've become a plumber. Last week, the downstairs water closet, well, the toilet, something broke. But but I, I was able to fix that. And then two days later, the upstairs toilet went, and I had to get oh, some parts no. and fixed it. Oh, so no. So I haven't been hiring any plumbers. And... Just before I came here, I was in the kitchen rinsing off something, and the handle came off the top of the the faucet. So uh, luckily, it was in the off position when it went. So I'm uh, after hockey. I'm going to be doing some more plumbing tonight. So. Wow! Yeah, fun. is this like after beef bean burrito Sunday or? <laughs> <laughs> well, the toilets this, just stopped this, working this mysteriously. No, no, no. <laughs> Heck, it has been a rough week. It's been yeah. a rough week. Well, hey, it's good to but have we'll you. We'll get here. through it. Thanks for making it out. <laughs> and thank you for making it out. And it's only Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Tuesday. Tonight we're going to be uh, we're going to actually be looking at a really awesome way to get some amazing games on our Linux computer. All right. So stick around. We're going to be learning all about that. Eric and I are going to be talking about uh, backing up our data as well. And uh, lots coming up. I'll let you kind of fill us in on what's coming up in the newsroom. I've got everything kind of started for you there, but it's uh, yes, it's open do. there in the tabs. So well, we can probably find it here. Yeah. Cheers. Well, coming up in the newsroom this week, Google's new privacy policy may be in violation of European law. At least one of Saturn's moons may have been found to be surrounded in oxygen. Oh. Yeah. That's and Google is helping small businesses in Wales get online. Feel the action like never before with a new com controller prototype being pitched to video game console makers. So stick around. These stories and others are coming up later in the show. Excellent. Yes. Hey, check out our website, www.category5.tv. Email us live at category5.tv. Get your questions in and join us in the chat room. Fantastic way to get your questions in. And if you've got a mobile device, visit our mobile site. It's mobile.cat5.tv. I have that, that in is, here somewhere. There you go. It's a great way for you to be able to bring up the show on your mobile device. And uh, we'd encourage you to scan that QR code or visit mobile.cat5.tv. <laughs> what are you up to? My arms aren't long enough. I've got new contact lenses. They're great for hockey and everything and new driving contacts. around. Yeah, but yeah, I can I can actually see them. Oh, that's yeah. scary. But golly, I can't see a darn thing up close. Really? Yeah. See, I can't wear contacts. I'm at that so. awkward age, kids. Might actually have to break down and get bifocals. Bifocals. Oh, my goodness. Then we'll have something oh my goodness. To, to poke fun at you. It's not like Robbie doesn't like to tease these already. Days, though, well, these days it's not that bad, right? You can get pretty thick bifocals that are that actually look quite nice <laughs> it's not it's not like when it's not like when we were kids right and it was the coke yes. bottle glasses right no and agamotto i've never tried progressives i uh, no i just haven't <laughs> <laughs> the technology of glasses folks uh, yes there it is hey i would encourage you to send in your postcards this week there you have it Grab a postcard from the local convenience store from your local town or somewhere nearby. Send it to Category 5 Technology TV, Postal Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. Yes, I even got some mail at that address. So obviously that. it was somebody watching the show who uh, 
caught that address. That's pretty cool. There you go. All right. Viewership is up in Texas. And, in Texas. And, and Greg, I'll, I'll just say thank you for spreading the word. Right? No, but viewership is, is very, very high in Texas right now. And I'd like to say hello to all of our viewers from Texas. And so much so that we've actually opened a new Category 5 studio line based in Texas. So it's a local call for our Texas viewers. But also, of course, it just makes it a little more central for uh, viewers who are in the United States who'd like to give us a phone call. Hey, guest 2391 is from Texas. Hey, guest 2391. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's a, I, I don't know what happened in Texas, but there's this, if you look at the viewer location map on our site, yeah, there's just a boom of viewership in, in Texas. So I think, uh, you know, there must be something going on down there. But anyways, uh, it's... Lone Star Beer. That, and there, Bob Will's music, perhaps. Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> the phone number, 2545 cat 5 tv so you can actually call that number and yeah. you'll be able to get through to us right here at the studio um you won't get us tonight live on the show we haven't opened it up for live interaction yet but you will be able to reach us here at the studio you'll be able to leave voicemail and say hello to us uh through through the week and things like that as well so and that right. will be opened up as well for for viewer questions down the road i think next week i'll bring my guitar and sing some bob wills music maybe we can have some lone star beer there seems to be a real uh, you know surge of support in texas for that well it is uh <laughs> next week is our saint patrick's day show so oh i'll be doing it, irish stuff it, next week oh right so it does i was just gonna say it warrants bringing a, a guitar and beer into the studio you know, yes you, but, you know what, what no you self-respecting irishman would drink green beer Guinness, it's gonna be Guinness as black as this coffee green, my friend indeed so yeah it would take a lot of food coloring to color that green i didn't get invited for next week so hey all right. Always welcome, Eric. Always <laughs> welcome. So, yes, uh, as I was saying, send in your postcards. Uh, the beta of our new website has or beta. started. Or beta. I mean, quit betting ar be beating around the bush. Gosh. Did you get a haircut, Robbie? No, you okay. know, this is my natural. I did. This is, yeah. 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 No, you look good. It, it took some <laughs> took some years off. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Right? No, uh, the, the every time I say be better now, I'm gonna be well. Maybe you'll I'm gonna do, be stumbling maybe on the maybe word. Maybe you'll do better in the future when you. <laughs> maybe I'll do better. Yeah, sorry. The beta 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 <laughs> beta started for the, uh, Thank you, the brand new Mota, website this week. <laughs> the brand new website started this week. Very very excited about the uh, the beta that's going on. Thank you so much to our wonderful team of beta testers. <laughs> I'm just going to eliminate the word from my vocabulary. Okay. Thank you. Hey, GP. Okay. <laughs> Great to see everybody joining us in the chat room. And uh, we are going to take just a real quick break. And we'll be right back after this. But in the meantime, get in the chat room. Send us your questions. If you need to get my attention, private message me. And, uh, and that will just kind of mm -hmm. let me know that, uh, that I, I've got a question. Okay? So... We have alpha testers room. or just beta testers? Just beta testers. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Your last chance to relax is on the way up the hill. With Liquid Image Canada, you can capture all the action like never before without a bulky sports cam. That's a high-definition video camera mask from liquidimagecanada.com. Hands-free HD video recording of all the excitement. Even in low light, you'll capture the memories just how you experienced them. The Summit Series Video Camera Masks in 720p or 1080p. Available now from liquidimagecanada.com. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I am Eric Kidd, the gloriously lovely and talented co-host. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> With the new haircut and the new contact lenses oh, and dear me and the bad attitude was that a, and, was and that coffee. a description that came through in the chat room or is that, that that was actually we see that uh, <laughs> someone here a meal nineteen seventy six is running is that Zubuntu beta is that yeah. is that Rachel's as an X U Rachel Ubuntu? Ubuntu yeah okay. Rachel's Ubuntu okay and uh, <laughs> Cat five beta and Win eight preview so this is just a, a real tester kind of person well with Windows eight consumer preview coming out this past week it is kind of a, an exciting time for windows users and and those who are wanting to be on the bleeding edge mm. but what's really interesting i think to me about 
the the um, I guess the direction of the paradigm of the desktop is that now the paradigm of the desktop. Well, now yeah, okay. Windows, Microsoft's product, is pursuing a similar kind of layout, a similar kind of, uh, I'll use the word paradigm, of the desktop as Ubuntu with its Unity interface, as GNOME 3, because everything's going touchscreen. Okay. But then I say, you know, well, what happens to the mouse user? Yeah. <laughs> How would you like that if we all got touchscreens here? It would just <laughs> Through the whole show, it'll be like, okay, well... I just actually, you know, I've done that a couple of times after. Um, actually, I got a new BlackBerry this week. Yes, another one, but, <laughs> um, but you know, touchscreen, and I actually it was on something else, and I, whoops, yeah, I shouldn't be telling anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> touchscreen could get really annoying. Especially when you put it instance. that far away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's way over there. Especially after you give me, you know, strawberry pie or something. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about the touchscreen interface of Windows 8 and Unity on uh, on Ubuntu and then GNOME 3 is that a lo- it's going to have to force a transition to touchscreen devices. And, and someone was saying to me, well, you know, I, I need my computer monitor in front of me. I don't want to have to look down at it. Could you imagine the, the hunch and the, the neck problems? I mean, chiropractic is going to all of a sudden have this inflow of uh, of customers <laughs> on account of this. You know, I already see it with the iPad and I and I do it myself <laughs> with with the touch screen on the on the iPod touch. We actually have viewers who watch space balls. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what are you Colonel Sanders? Chicken. Oh. Best line of the entire movie. Yeah, but jamming up the monitor is not a good thing. Definitely okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> As okay. I take a sip of my hot coffee. Yes. <laughs> well, how nice is that? Great. You ready for questions yet? Yeah, and viewer questions, I mean, send them in in the chat room. I would love to receive those. Just join us in the chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode, or just click the link on our website, Category5.tv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question from Scott Reeves. And hey, uh, Scott. Catching up in some older episodes and found your series on web development. Yeah. Krista made the image in Photoshop, but I couldn't catch how big the canvas was. Is there a typical starting point? Mm. Thanks. That's a pretty decent question. Yeah. I think what it boils down to is determining what size of screen, what resolution of screen your target audi- audience is going to have. So typically the, I would guess that you know people are going to have a 1024 by 768 minimum resolution. We can confirm that. We'll go to W3 Schools. That's W3C, a great pardon me. Yeah. yeah. W3C School, and uh, I'm going to do a search for browser stats. Let's try that. Now I'm going to I'm going to actually link to this in the show notes for episode number 233 to make it easier for you. Okay. Hey, you're the 999,999 wow, visitor. Wow, I just happened to be. Look at that. <laughs> Click it. Congratulations, you won. <laughs> oh, can I, can I, can I? Okay, so this isn't exactly, okay, Sorry. it's a display that I want. But this is interesting. Look at this. For all of those who have ever been told, oh, well, everybody uses Internet Explorer. That is so 1999. Okay, okay, but realistically on, on this continent, don't you think? No. Okay. This is, these are the real stats from W3 schools, okay? Okay. W3C schools. Let's go back to 2004, all right? In 2004, you can see that 76.2% of users were in using Internet Explorer. Well, yeah. And <laughs> earlier, it was, okay, in January of that year, it was 24.7. Well, that's where those stats come from. Now, if you look at... 84.7. Yeah. Did I say something else? You said 24. Oh, it probably was. Anyway, look at what happened to Internet Explorer. It going down, down, down. And here we go. February of this year is only at 19.5%. Firefox is at 36.6. Chrome, 36.3. You know, I don't actually mind Firefox. It's pretty Firefox good. Firefox is pretty it's good. pretty good. I like it. It's going to give you a safer experience than Internet Chrome Explorer. Chrome has been a little... Chrome, I'm, less... <laughs> I'm, I've got mixed emotions about it. I mean, I'm using Chrome right now, okay? But I, I do find that I'm not too happy about the interface of it and the way that it's but that's that's just the direction again the paradigm shifting toward uh, minimizing the amount of wasted space on the screen 
so it makes sense but sometimes it's harder to find stuff so what i wanted to show you yeah so what's the average is the browser display so what we want to see is okay well how many people you won. oh cool congratulations we you won. won no they're serious you won they seriously you know, because I was the 999,999th visitor just a week or two ago. So That's amazing. Amazing stuff. <laughs> okay, so here we go. January 2012, higher than 1024 by 768 uh, is 85% of the users on the web. How many people are still using 1024 by 768? Only 13%. How many people are lower than that? 1%. Okay, so we're, we're going to forget about those who are using 800 by 600. Sorry, OU 1%, you need to upgrade. 1024 by 768, 13% is still a pretty high number, so that's what we're going to base it on. So we need to take into account that we've got a bar on the right-hand side and some, uh, some window chrome as well. So we're going to say about 960 pixels width is about how wide you want your website to be, and that will fit very perfectly inside of a 1024 by 768 center it and then if you get a bigger screen it's going to be nicely centered in the middle of the screen and then there's of course fluid width as well but that's a topic of discussion for another day cat5.tv slash web dev to take you right to that web development series oh okay which i'll point out again that uh, and this is fantastic this is still active you'll remember in the series we offered a 70 dollar coupon that gives you a year of web hosting Pardon me, and a free domain registration. That coupon, we're going to keep that going as long as they will allow us to do so. So that still exists. So get to cat5.tv slash webdev if you'd like to uh, get a hold of that. I'm going to actually download the file that Krista created because your question is specifically, well, what resolution did she use? That file is available for download so that you can play with it. So let's right. see. Okay, so. Now, does it open up in uh, in the GIMP? I know, but in is Photoshop. it an OCX? Or, oh, it's a PSD, nope. so you can open it up in both. Okay. It is a PSD, so okay. it's compatible with both, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the guide here that she's created, and I can just, you know, I'll copy that to my clipboard just to be real simple. And we can see that she went with 951 pixels width. Height is irrelevant because height is always going to be fluid, Right. The, uh, the height of the website is going to get longer. Right. But depending I mean, on you the don't want to have um, an image that's Super not short? fitting into the... Yeah. You know, take, yeah, you don't want it to be bigger than your homes, than your landing page. Right. So, but what I mean is the, the, the yeah. width... If you go over the width, you're, you're going to have horizontal scrolling. Right. If, if you no did, fun. If you made your website like 12, 1,200 pixels wide... It's going to create side scrolling on a lot of monitors. You don't want that. It's very, very annoying. Vertical scrolling is expected we're pretty when used you're on to the that. web. Yeah, we're yeah. used to that. So, and your mouse wheel automatically scrolls down. It's fantastic. So, okay. So she went with that same kind of idea of 950 to 960 pixels width, and uh, and that seemed to work fairly well for that design. Again, it's cat5.tv/webdev to actually bring up that. Uh, that series and, and get a look at it. Download some of the files that had to do with it. Cool. Any questions for us in the chat room? Oh, and thank you very much for your question there, uh, Scott. Cheers. How's your coffee? Oh, you've been the coffee's good. Going I'm working on it. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me drop the pewter. Be good. Oh, sorry. Um. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. All right. Um. Oh. Okay, some folks are using two different browsers for different applications. I suppose Definitely. that's all right. Now, what's Agamotto talking about here in the chat room? It says, call me weird. Okay, you're weird. Oh. Oh. <laughs> is there more Full to that? stop? <laughs> Full <more>? stop. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, uh, isn't that why you would want two versions, one for low res and uh, a regular one? You mean for a website? Yeah. You might be thinking fluid width, which, again, as I say, this is a little bit, it's a little bit, um, tough to get into in the in the course of the show tonight. With a fluid wi width website, you create something that expands to approximately, you know, there's a, there's a small version, which is 960 pixels wide, and then you've got a wider version, and you've got everything in between, and things scale up and down, okay. which is quite nice. That's fluid width that uses a minimum, a min width, min dash, dash width in CSS, and a max width. And then you have the the flow of percentages between that so 
Well, we can play with that some night. Yeah, maybe we yeah. should. That'd be kind of fun. And Dave Major's lovely wife wants coffee. I would love to uh, to send you some. <laughs> it's very good. Mm. <laughs> Dave can't make coffee. Dave, <sighs> I bet you, you wish you could have some. You oh, need sorry. you need the French press, which you can always find for Go fifty ahead. cents at a yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest thing. I mean, my pasta maker was fifty cents at a yard sale because people these days just don't want to be. Bothered. Have you tried his pasta though? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, you know what? Wooden mallets are also fifty cents a yard sale, so you watch out because they can hurt. Wooden mallets. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know where to go from there. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Wright oh, thinks we should drink, and he okay. wants us to say pasta, pasta, pasta. Are you saying pasta? I don't pasta. know. Pasta. Potato, potato. That's the matter. You I'm just reading what it says. Okay. Potato, potato. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah, Robbie <laughs> is kind of violent. You saw the one where uh, he, he tried to, I, I think, uh, was that the, well, Rachel and I were answering some questions quite seriously and you came in with a knife. <laughs> no, no, that was that was you with the, with the screwdriver. That was very random. I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no other questions for us in the chat room because if not, uh, we will. Uh, we'll no, jump they in. wanted we'll to know what's right with you and your violence. You know, it was sticks with Christy and Mouth with Eric. Tonight. But okay, they're concerned. They're concerned for your co-hosts. <laughs> you not know? really. Not I really. mean, you feed Christy and you feed Eric now, but yeah, the pie. You know, Rachel and Hillary haven't been fed, as far as I can tell. <laughs> they were planning a revolt. Now. I, I did download the the new Windows development preview, or oh. the uh, pardon me the 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 consumer preview. Oh, to take a look at Windows Eight. Have you seen it yet? I have not. It's very different. I'd love to actually bring it up on the show just to to see how it is different. Um, but it works very very poorly in virtual machines. So oh. if you're interested in getting a part of uh, be, being a part of that beta, uh, I think unfortunately you're going to really need to have a system to install it on, a hard drive that you can do that with. It works poorly in VirtualBox. Garby is uh, reiterating. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Actually, Greg in Texas wants to know, how does Adblock block ads from a stream? that would be a question for them. <laughs> does, it, does it work? The, the only thing to... <laughs> pardon work, me. Greg? The only thing to keep in mind with blocking ads is when you're dealing with something like category five is just the fact that those ads may pay for the show to go forward but also like those in-stream ads those are part of what gives us the bandwidth in order to uh to broadcast the show so they are kind of important yeah. so so we don't that's why we don't really get into a lot of you know how to block ads what we should do though and it's happened before <laughs> We had a very kind viewer who put together a tutorial is show you, if you're going to install this stuff anyways, here's how you can exclude Category 5. Ah. But one of the important things to us is is always to, you know, we try to present the ads in such a way that it's non-intrusive. But, of course, if you're watching live, you do get more ads than the uh, people who are watching in RSS because you're using Ustream or Justin.tv, uh, and those services are ad-supported. You can buy into it. You can pay for a subscription to those services and that will cut the ads down. But uh, but that's really the only option. Well, TOB33 has a question with what you said last week about yeah, scammers up, phoning you. And yep. uh, a few years ago, uh, the ISP called me saying there was malware on my PC. Crazy thing is, there was, and I knew about it. How did they know? Hmm. Well, in that case, it was your internet service provider. So this is a company that you know, right? Mm-hmm. What happens is you're connected to the internet, and a lot of malware these days, what does it do? It sends out spam, right? So your internet service provider will sometimes even turn off your internet connection and even give you a warning when you bring up your browser. that says, hey, you're infected. You need to contact us to get this cleaned up. The thing is is that they can see the traffic, they, they, as Garby's saying there, but, uh, but also they know that there's something going on where a normal user does not send out 10,000 emails in a minute. It doesn't happen. So when you get one of it's those types... Do, yeah. <laughs> send, 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 send! 
even with rapid fire, that's a challenge. So with, when you get one of those infections, they're going to know about it fairly quickly. And they're certainly going to know about it if it puts them on a spam list, if it blacklists their server. If you're using an, you know, if you're on a particular service and you're using an at, you know, such and such dot com, it's their domain, it's not your own, and you get put on a blacklist, guess what happens to them? All their users get put on a blacklist. So yes. they know. They know very, very quickly. Indeed. Um, here's one from Emil1976. Hey, Emil. Robbie F., what do you think of the current support for HTML5 in most browsers? It's still an, an evolving yeah. um, technology, right? So what do I think about it? It is not excellent. There. No, it's, no. Not, it's not there. It's not, it's not an accepted standard yet as far as uh, being adapted in t- or adopted into all the browsers. So uh, as a developer, it's, it's one of those cases where you've got to create backward compatibility out the wazoo if you're going to be going with HTML5, and that's exactly what you see on sites like YouTube. You know, if, if you don't have HTML5, it falls back to Flash. It's just the way that it's got to be for now. Uh, with all of our video stuff, it's going to be HTML5 if you support it, and if not, it's going to fall back to Flash. It's just that's necessary. So, but we'll eventually see. You know, how long did it take for people to stop using IE6? There's still a few holders, isn't there? It, well, <laughs> if there are, you know, you need to upgrade to something because that's just ridiculous, right? But uh, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time, but it'll be nice once it is fully adopted. But for those of us who want it, to get the best web experience, you want to stay on top of your browser updates, make sure you've got a a current browser. Firefox is the one that I'm uh, probably going to lean toward. Um, As Eric was saying, there's also Chrome uh, that works really well. I would stay away from Internet Explorer altogether. I'm still using IE8. Are you? Yeah, I am. For shame. For shame. Who knew? You must have Firefox installed. I do. And you use it? There's some things that just don't... Once you upgrade to IE9, you're especially going to start seeing this whole compatibility. You oh, know, yeah. it's like the compatibility button becomes a necessary feature, and it's like, oh, Internet Explorer. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> oh, Garby in the chat room. Well, hey, thank you, everyone, uh, for your questions. If, if we have... Any other ones, I, I don't want to miss you. Feel free to PM us. Uh, send me a private message in the chat room because we don't want to miss you. And, of course, if we do miss you, uh, make sure you email us live at category5.tv. Yeah. Or give us a call this week, 2545-CAT5-TV. <coughs> yeah, what he said. Hey, Invincible Mutant. All right. <laughs> All right. Here are the top stories from the Category5.tv newsroom. The European Union's Justice Commissioner has said that the recent changes made by Google to its privacy policy are in breach of European law. Privacy policy change implemented on Thursday means private data collected by one Google service can be shared with its other platforms including YouTube, Gmail, and Blogger. Google said, however, that it believed the new policy complied with EU law and went ahead with the changes despite warnings from the EU. Data regulators in France had cast doubt on the legality of the move and have launched a Europe-wide investigation. A NASA spacecraft has detected oxygen around one of Saturn's icy moons. The discovery supports a theory that suggests all of the moons near Saturn and Jupiter might have oxygen around them. Researchers say, yes, researchers say their finding increases the likelihood of finding the ingredients for life on one of the moons orbiting gas giants. On one of the moons orbiting gas giants. How's that? Just a little bit. <laughs> According to Andrew Coates of University College London, who co-wrote the publication, the moon has no liquid water and so does not have the conditions to support life. But it is possible that other moons of Jupiter and Saturn do. The study has been published in the Geophysical Research Letters. <clears throat> As part of a government initiative to help stimulate economic recovery in Wales, Google is trying to encourage more Welsh businessmen to get online as figures show around 40% of small firms have no website. It said 
3% of the businesses in Wales have access to sell goods and services online compared to the UK, average of 39%. Business Minister Edwina Hart said the Welsh Government was working with Google to help small businesses access new markets. Google UK plans to train digital agencies across Wales to deliver training and workshops once their initial three-month campaign has ended. A video games controller which pulls and stretches the skin of its users' thumbs has been unveiled in Canada. Developers say their prototype provided extra feedback about game characters' actions. For example, they said the device could mimic the recoil of a gun or the motion of a boat on water better than what could currently be achieved by vibrating a controller. Weird. The device is being pitched to Microsoft, among other console makers. I don't know if viewers can see this, but you see the, the texture. So to think that that is actually going to move around in such a way that the textures emulate the touch and the feel. That, it, it looks like the little thumb pads. It, that, it does, yeah. Look, uh, like from like a the little dots almost. you have on your laptop. Yeah. Uh, but then there's that other cradle that your thumbs... That's something. Very strange. Well, you can get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at Category5.tv. For the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Eric Kidd. Thanks, Eric. All right. In just a couple of moments, we're going to be looking at, uh, interestingly enough, video games. Oh. On our Linux system, we don't have this cool touch device, but we're going to show you the easiest way to get some awesome games on your Linux box. Um, tonight, the show is brought to you by Quarter Electric. Uh, they are, of course, the official electric company of Category 5 Technology TV. You can find them online, www.quarterelectric.com. And we're also brought to you by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, that is GardenGateFarms.com. What's up? Oh, hey, uh, IE6 holdout. <laughs> Robbie hates me now. Yeah, I saw that. Garby. <laughs> hey, That's what Garby. I was laughing about. <laughs> okay. What a guy. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and our website is right there, www.category5.tv, with our new site launching, I, I'd like to say very soon. It's not very soon. It's in beta right now. Very exciting. More beta. We can go for the awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, oh, just other thing <laughs> bash my head in. <laughs> UHF. Bash my head in. Go ahead. Just bash it in. Oh, my. Okay. Have a drink, Chris. And we are going to move on <laughs> with our feature for today. I don't think we're moving on at all. <laughs> hey. To be 33, or T-O-B 33. Toby. Toby. Yeah, it's Lee. Lives in Wales. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, Toby. How cool is that? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Does Tom Jones still live in Wales? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Greg One, in Texas is going along with my pronunciation. Fantastic. Yes. One of the things that is a misconception with Linux, somebody believes and somebody spreading rumors and lies that there's no games. Who is spreading these rumors and lies? Who is it? It's the same guy who says it's beta. Beta. We're, 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 we're not going to entropia, are we? No, okay. Here's the thing. There are tons of open source free games available for Linux. But how do you get them? Where do you get them? Synaptic Package Manager is a great place to get them. Ubuntu Software Center. Fantastic. But there is something else out there. I mean, you've heard of Steam for Windows. But don't your kids get called geeks when they're playing Tux Cart and stuff and they talk to their friends? The kids, the young kids love it. Yeah. <laughs> My young kids love those kinds of games from Synaptic Package Manager. Brilliant stuff. Can but in the meantime, no. there is Tux Cart, there's Super Tux, but we're not looking at that stuff today. We're talking serious gaming here. All right. You've heard of Steam for Windows, but there is something for Linux called DJL that I'm not, you know, it's, it's not as popular as it should be. And I wanted to share it with you tonight because maybe, you, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've used it, maybe you've never heard of it. And you're wondering, what is he on about? We always wonder that, Robbie. What is it? Eric, thank you so much for your feedback. 
Okay, I'm just helping out here. I'm going to actually bring up Synaptic Package Manager on my system here. You're going to find this on Linux under System, Administration, Synaptic Package Manager. Or if you don't have it, you can use Yum, you can use whatever. And you'll see if you do a search for DJL. I've already thrown it in here, but you can just highlight it and go mark for installation. What is it? DJL is an open source game manager written in Python for the Linux operating system. It's inspired by Valve's Steam software for Windows. So what it really comes down to is, well, what does it do? What is it? What Synaptic Package Manager is to all things Linux, what apt-get is to all things Linux, DJL is to Linux games. Okay, then. Mm. So we've like installed that now. Let's bring it up. Under games, DJL, game <laughs> manager. Here it comes. Simple interface. Here are the latest updates up to just a couple weeks ago. A couple of new different things. Repository up at the top there. Let's take a look at this list. Hooey. There's a list of games. There is a list of games. These games are all available to you on your Linux system for free. Whether you're looking for first-person shooters... Wolfenstein? That is Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. It's the next generation of That's, you know the Wolfenstein okay. series. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great first-person shooter. It's been around for several years, but it's still playable. Very good. If you're looking for X-Moto, which is a fun uh, motorcycle kind of game that uses physics... Come on, is there a hockey one? If you're looking for Yo Frankie 3D, <laughs> Battle of Westna, Warzone, War Sow, another uh, first person shooter that adds a comic element. There are tons of games, and you can just go through. Oh, and for Eric, there it is Super Tux Kart. Oh, there you go. Along with Super Tux, which is a clone of Super Mario Brothers. And of course, Super Tux Kart being a clone of Super Mario Kart. There are a ton of different games that are available for you here in DJL. DJL, again, you can install it for free on your Linux computer. And once it's installed, you can grab any one of these games. So let's see how simple it is for us to grab one of these games. Oh, Lemmings Ball. Cool. Lin City, like a SimCity clone. Look at that. That it really takes me back. because Map City Princess Adore. Yeah. No, okay. Cool. Okay, so what can we grab? Let's say Xmodo. That's one that I like. Anyways, all I've done is highlighted it. I can see the description. I can see the picture. So give me an idea of what the graphics are like. All I have to do is hit install. I'm scared for you even being near a motorcycle, Robbie. It's already started downloading. <laughs> see that? All right. I wouldn't go near a motorcycle. That's scary stuff. <laughs> but this one I can do because it's just a cool game on Linux. There you go. So as that's installing, I can go through and I can grab other ones. You can pour more coffee. I can pour more coffee. Would you like some more coffee as we wait for the two seconds that it takes to install? Uh, there you go. Note that all these games are being installed online. That's good. Save a little bit for you. <laughs> he saved me the grinds. <laughs> saved me the grinds. You want a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here's the thing. These were, it's, it's coming through online. It's downloading it right off the internet. So we don't have to um, insert a disc or anything like that. And these are free, free full games, right? So let's see once, once we've got one installed. Chris Reich says DJL is not listed in the repositories for Debian. Well, you can get it off of their website. We'll take a look in just a couple of moments. So, uh, so stick around, or you can uh, hop I think on. What to he's that saying yourself. is, don't be impatient with him. He gets like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, let's, let's work our way through. You know. <laughs> and we'll take a look. Okay, so here I've gone from repositories. This is where I go to actually install the game. Okay, once they're installed, you'll see that now I've got an option down here. When I highlight that game, it says I can play. Oh. Or, if I click on games up at the top, this shows me all the games that I've installed so far. So, let's say... Blob Wars? Blob Wars. Nice. Yes. So, I click on it, and 
launch the game, and here we go. Wow. All right. So remember that all these games are available for you for free through DJL. Frame rate is going to be choppy there just because I'm capturing uh, through software, through my LAN. But of course, you can install this on your Linux computer, and you'd be able to play this as well. But that is, again, it's available for free, and all of those tons and tons of games are available to you in an interface that, like Steam, is, you just, it's all dedicated to games. Kids are going to love this one. I guarantee you. Well, when uh, my kids were little, we had uh, a busy town and some of those... Was that uh, Richard Scary? And there was Arthur. Things are about to get scary. <laughs> um, so I'll bet you that my game oh. is already installed. Okay. There you go. And Xmodo is still downloading, of course. Uh, we're using a lot of bandwidth, and I, yes. and I don't care to push it. So, uh, But that is DJL, and uh, you can, of course, quite often find it in your repositories. If not, we are going to post links for you in the show notes of episode number 233. 233. Yes. I wrote that down, so I'd not forget. The website address for DJL is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different because it's not like a .com. It's en, for English, dot djl-linux.org. <laughs> Again, I will send you the show notes, uh, the link in the show notes for episode number 233. Uh, the website is slightly out of date. The file, the program is downloadable off of that site, though. You can get the source. You can get the uh, whatever you need uh, off of that website if it's not in your repository. If it is in your repository, make sure you grab it. And, of course, the games are going to be coming off of different uh, sources. So those will be kept up to date as well. It's DJL for Linux. Check it out if you uh, want to give uh, some games a try. Great way to, deter uh, to find games on Linux as well. Because you can just highlight it. Oh, a screenshot looks cool. Description sounds cool. Install. And then try it. See if you like it. Remove cool. it if you don't. Keep it if you do. It's free. Sounds good. Free is good. Mm -hmm. I like free. Free coffee. Free coffee. This is Category 5 Technology TV. And our website is www.category5.tv. Love to hear from people who are new to Linux. Pop us an email live at category5.tv. And uh, what are your impressions so far? They're not saying anything. They got to send us an email. <laughs> Eric, I had a friend. I had a friend. I, I have a friend. Okay. But I had a friend this week who had something tragic happen to their computer. No. Oh. Yeah. And he didn't have a backup. This is me looking surprised. Oh. Friends, if you're watching, have a backup. Always, always, always have a backup. Yes, I used to preach that sort of thing. If it's worth saving, it's worth backing up. Three times and then, over. You know, and I'd lose stuff. And What's the biggest complaint about <laughs> backups, though? Why, why do people not back up? Why are you not backing up your files? Your, your digital camera, all of your oh. family photos for yes. the past five years at least are all digital. How many copies do you have of those? Do you have three copies? Because if your computer crashes, where is the other copy? If, and I don't wish this on anybody, but if your house burnt down, where are your copies of your files? That's what we have yeah. to consider. We, because, you know, everyone's going to get out of the house safe. I believe that. But what is going to happen to all of those memories, all of the things that you can never get back? Yeah. We call that off-site storage is a good idea. Off-site storage? <laughs> something that you can take off-site, something that you can throw in a safety deposit box. Here's a trick for you. Get two backup drives. Backup one, take it, put it in your safety deposit box. If you don't have one, you don't want to spend the money on a safety deposit box, put it at a family member's house in a safe place. Fine but then be running a weekly backup on your other hard drive. Once a month, change the drives. 
go get the one from your family's house, bring it home, but at the same time drop off the one that you've been using every week. Start backing yeah. up on the other one. So you always have a backup somewhere. That's without even going off site. I think one of the one of the problems though is that people generally find backups to be a challenge to remember to do and a challenge to actually do the do the actual yeah. deed of of backing up. There are companies that have worked very very hard uh, in the past you know few years especially to make backing up your data extremely easy because I think that's really what it boils down to. Anytime I've talked to somebody who is not doing a backup, it's well why not? Well, I, I, I have a backup drive, but I always forget. Oh, I have a backup drive, but I, I thought it was backing up, but it wasn't working. Or, yeah. you know, it could be any one of these things. So one of the companies that does a really good job, and I've got one of their drives here, it's called Click Free. Yeah, you put on is your it glasses. Free? And no. It is not. Okay. And we're not going to talk about pricing, but we are, we are going to talk about feature set. And this drive, you of course. Are sharp things? I am. I run the place. Eric's going to actually give this a try tonight because have you ever seen one of these drives? I have not. Here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to crack this open. This This is is the unboxing. This is, yeah, 750 gig drive, okay? But it's the click-free C6, which means it's going to back up your entire computer, all your files incrementally. It's going to do it uh, in such a way that if you crash your hard drive, you get a new hard drive in, it will restore everything back. Ah. Nice and easy. Just plug me in. All right, let's see how... How easy. How easy or how difficult the click-free drive is. I'll, I'll let you kind of... This is very we'll, cool. Yeah, there you go. You take a look at that. I've got your USB port on your laptop there. Well, let's see. Are there any so you hold that up so that the viewers can, hear, just can see. Do we want to take the plastic? Yeah, oh yeah. It's a brand new drive, right? But it is. Let's, uh, let's look at it as if you were... This was your backup drive that you've purchased. And like I say, there are companies that are doing this kind of setup these days, the making it easier and easier. I don't think we can actually see. Okay. Just a so let's take this drive, plug in the uh, the provided cable, which looks like a it's, uh, slightly proprietary it USB does cable. It look kind of pri- proprietary. I can't power. even say proprietary. Chris Reich, <laughs> you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we so got that this looks like, cable. Yeah, we've got yeah, USB uh, three USB on the but kind of a it's got USB three on the one end. Yeah, you can see because it's blue, uh, but it is downward compatible to USB two as well, and of course USB one point one. But why would you want to use an old USB like that? Because it'd be so super slow. Which side are we uh, dealing? With? Okay, so he's gonna. It's right there at the front there. Right there, there that's goes. nice. There Extreme close up of Eric. Hey. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to let you uh, plug that into your system. All right. Here it goes. Okay. It's in. Click. And we've never done this, folks. No. Okay, we've got a blue light. Now what's happening here? Installing device drivers. Rather a bud light. Oh, that's not what you meant. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) You'll see it's detected hard drives. Open folder to view files. Oh, use this drive for back. Should I just let her go, or what do you want to do here? Speed up my system. Use this drive for backup. Whatever. Uh, close that stuff. You want that closed? Sure. And there you go. Start click free C6. Look at this. The software is built right into the drive. So, we, yeah, Eric, if you could just click on start, start click free C6. I can do that. As simple as that. There, we there you go. I okay. guess we'll agree to the licensing. We didn't need a CD. Didn't need anything like that. Yeah, we've so read that. It's all there. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to say yes. Do you want to allow the following program to make That change? question, yeah. yeah, that question is asking if the software, if you trust this program. So when you see that, make sure you do read it and know what it is that you're doing. We're, of course, installing a device, so we're expecting that question. Yeah. If you see it out of the blue and you're surfing the web, you definitely want to say no. So there it goes. Nothing is easier. Nothing. C6, easy image. So it's actually, you know, the software is embedded into the the drive of the device. So in that case, there's no CD that's necessary. There's no need to install programs um, before you get this thing up and running. And as I was saying, the the whole idea is to take your backups and make it so incredibly simple that that you don't have to think about it. So you actually do it. Or it does it, perhaps, yeah. Once you're through this initial process, of letting it, it's hands off. It's it's 
it's going to do it all itself. But once it's in there and it's and it's going, it's going to back up your entire system for you on a recurring basis. Every time you plug in that drive, it's going to do an incremental backup. So it's going to be able to store several several backups. So the first time is it going to do the whole drive? Yes. The first time it's going to take quite a bit of time. Right. It's so going to do your operating system we'll files. We'll be out of here by then. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to see the actual backup take place, but we can see the how simple the installation. Now that just disappeared. There we go. There we go. Okay. So shall we? First of all, it's telling us that hey, this by the way, since you bought this, we've released a new version of the software. What do you want to do? So hit update and let that go. See how you know because this is something that you as a user are going to encounter. And you really ought to get the latest and greatest yeah you always want to have the latest because that means that they've found bugs they've found potential issues or perhaps they've improved the performance of the device maybe they've made it better as far as this software goes the click free software does require microsoft windows however uh viewers who are in the chat room are, are asking well what about linux what happens in that situation here we are running it on windows 7 and it works great on linux it is still just an external usb hard drive so you can use your favorite backup software you can use back in time and you can create incremental backups very, very easily. You can use whatever backup software it is that you use. Uh, we've got Deja Dupe, for example. Nepumuk, or Nepomuk. Try to say that 10 times fast. Let's say Nepo, but. Is that what it is? I don't Nepo. Know. There you go. So that is now downloading the updates to that system. Very hands off as far as. Uh, getting it to go. In this case, because we're live on the air during the broadcast, I'll get you just to push skip update there, Eric, and we'll just kind of fast forward through that. Uh, but of course... You're sure you want to cancel this update? In our yes. case, we do. In your case, let that go right through, okay? So let's see what happens next. Is it a spin in its wheels? It's... Maybe it just Did we cancel everything? I don't know. I, I think we canceled we the update, but let's... Uh... What's unique about the click-free device, and maybe we'll unplug it and plug it back in again. How's that sound? Because I think sure. we canceled everything. Maybe when it I'm goes to sure update, we did, we'll see. But well, but it did close the software, didn't it? It closed something. Plugging in the device, of course, is going to reactivate the software that's on the device. It's going to ask you what you want to do. What's neat about click-free, here he goes, okay, so is that it automatically creates your backup sets so you don't have to ever think about okay well what's being backed up are my documents being backed up are my pictures being backed up C if you cancel that update can we do this without running an update we're going to find out aren't we? Yes, there you go okay apparently. now look at this this is amazing okay this is what you're normally going to see 30, when you plug in the device 29. it's a yeah. countdown what's going to happen Click free will automatically search for and back up your files, and this is going to start in 20 seconds. 19. Fully automatic. 17. So there's nothing to it. All you have to do, once you've got that update, because that's going to ask you now every you time. Now you have the option of just clicking start, don't you? Sure. Let's do that. That'll be All right. Just there you go. So what is it doing now? Searching for files. And it's going through. It's finding all the photos, all of the files on your computer that are critical everything that needs to be backed up and it's grabbing those and moving or making copies of them onto your drive this is a device that uh, you can password encrypt yeah. your backups as well so and this again is just one of many different devices that are doing this but this is yeah. uh, definitely a, a cream of the crop yeah. as far as the first time use. through it could take several hours but definitely but mm -hmm. every subsequent time it's going to be just whatever you've changed yeah or you know yeah. if you've done some updates if you've Changed some files, mm -hmm. written some new songs, whatever. Yeah, there you go. See, if yeah. you uh, understand that your first backup is backing up everything. But then, as Eric says, you may create a couple of uh, documents in the meantime. You might save a couple of files, uh, maybe import another 50 pictures. So the next time you run your backup, the next time you plug in the click-free device, it only has to back up those particular pictures because everything else is already backed up. Now, I can see here on Eric's screen that it's already started going through Windows and Programs. So it's doing the operating system first. It's backing all of that up. And then it's going to go through yeah. all my files, my email, everything, without me ever having to think, oh, but did I back up my email contacts? Did I back up my photos? Did I back up my documents? Because they're all in different places on the drive. This is going through and finding them all. Are you able you. to back up just, I mean, restore just uh, one mm -hmm. file? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
and you can of course restore the entire system as well. Right. So if you do need to start yeah, when from you have scratch. a catastrophic failure, failure. Mm-hmm. In the case of my friend, I'll just go back to how I started this segment. Is uh, this 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 guy? I mean, I love the guy. He's a great guy, and I've always, you know, ho- hoped the best for his computer situation. But he didn't keep a backup, and he called me up this weekend and said my computer just it won't turn on and I I ran over and took a look and sure enough his hard drive had seized up and crashed so now we're looking at definitely a data recovery situation you know what that is ladies and gentlemen you know what it is unfortunate it's more than unfortunate when you get the price tag on a data recovery job when it could have been prevented by a device like this which is under $200 well under $200 when I say that loosely to give you a, a, a ballpark but uh, you know, anywhere from 100 to 140 dollars, and up from there. So, could have been prevented. Here we are. On because the price there could have right. been. A <laughs> 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 how much? How much do you bid? Um, but it could have been prevented in that. Yeah, the hard drive was meant to crash anyways. It's, it happens. Power has been fluctuating like crazy here in Barrie lately. Uh, fortunately, here in our studio, everything's been fixed thanks to Cordery Electric, and we haven't lost any any hardware. But other people are losing hardware hard drives crashing from power fluctuations and things like that. Uh, UPS batteries that haven't been changed in over three years and they no longer hold a charge. So, you know, other thing to keep in mind. And in this in this case of my friend, it could have been, his data could have been saved had he had a backup. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So, 900, a few thousand dollars later, did he get his files back? Or? We haven't got to that oh. point yet. It, the It's at data recovery right now. Yeah. And, We'll see what happens, but that is, you know, it's a bad, bad case, and I want to avoid that for you. You know, if you have a good backup, then data recovery is not a problem. I had it happen. I had my hard drive crash at work, and th- it was the first time I've ever had a crash where everything is constantly backed up. I have a backup that runs at 10 a.m. every morning, so um, I was able. I think it was like 11:30 when my computer crashed, and it was there was no stress, none. I, uh, I lost a day of, of work as far as, you know, having to uh, get my computer back up and running, get a new hard drive put in and everything. But there was no stress of, oh, no, all those documents that I've been working on, all those websites that I was Somebody's building over the past couple of weeks. was ready to go live. Exactly. Boom. Gone. There was none of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pyrus Rock is wondering, what happens if you turn your computer off uh, to go to bed if it hasn't finished doing the backup? Well, that's fine because here it is. It's just it's, it's incremental. So it's going to save everything up until that point. And the next time you pick it up, it's going to start from there. So, but the power will go out unexpectedly for the hard drive as well because it's powered by the USB. Correct. Yes. So, will oh, the file win- write be okay, or will it? Oh yeah, because your computer dismounts your hard drives and everything before, and and closes off okay. any cached files. Right. Otherwise, you'd always be losing files off of your hard drive okay. when, when you shut down. So everything is closed off. Everything is saved from the buffer to the drive before your system shuts down. That's why if there are big write operations happening, sometimes it takes a little longer for you to shut down. Gotcha. So no problems there. So folks, keep a good backup. What are you doing for backups? Uh, you know, I have a, a little external drive, and mm-hmm. I do backups, but I'm a, a little lax on... Yeah, I'd probably lose a couple of weeks' worth of stuff right yeah. now if everything went I think south on me. I at the very least... Get that external hard drive. Get something like the click-free yeah. device. This Actually, is the this ideal is really solution. Slick. This is it nice. really is. This is very nice. But at least, I mean, if you can't do it, if you can't keep up, back up all your photos right now. Put them on DVDs if you have to, and get them off-site. Okay. So just that way, I mean, if if a year from now you've still not been doing backups, at least you've got all those backed up. If I were to lose all the pictures of my kids when they were just newborns and stuff, because everything's digital. Even yeah. our videos are digital. If I were to lose those, that'd be devastating. L- and, like honestly, as you know, a friend of mine, his house burnt down. Yeah. So he lost everything, including digital. Right. But all the paper ones and everything, and that's where you know you've got your backup sitting beside your computer, and your house goes no good. Um, nothing's nothing's there. So right. you do need offsite. Uh, Offsite backup is fantastic. Cloud, uh, backups, yep, cloud you? backups are excellent. Pogo plug is fantastic. This device here, though, you can see it's small enough to fit in your purse. It's small yeah. enough to put in your in your shirt pocket uh, for the gents that are wearing shirts like that. But here's the thing: you can get it offsite. You can put it somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, it'll fit in here. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can get it off. You can put it somewhere. I mean, it doesn't have to be an off-site backup if you can take it to mom or dad's place or brother or sister's place and leave it in a drawer somewhere. You're keeping your glove compartment in your car. Well, that's not a good idea. Mm, heat, a, heat and yeah. cold, cold, pretty bad for I have you. a question. Sure. These <laughs> Nanobugs. Nanobots. Nanobugs. Yeah, my son and I love those things. So. Oh, so yeah. we didn't get to play with those yet. We didn't get to play with them yet, but we'll play with them after the show. Those of you watching Backstage Pass will get to enjoy that. <laughs> Have a great <laughs> week. Do your backups. Please and thank you. Talking about backups, get them off site. I have more plumbing to do when I get home. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and hockey tonight. Busy and night. Hockey. Busy night. Yeah. You have a great night, and we'll see you next week. Remember, do your backup. Get it off site, okay? Get it out of, out of there. Just in case. Better safe than sorry. All right. Have a great week, folks. Take it easy. Good to see you. See ya. Cheers. <laughs>